All right. Hello, my name is Kate Zimmerman, and I'm a Principal Deep Learning Architect at AWS. Uh, in today's session, we'll be discussing Amazon SageMaker Autopilot. Launched at reInvent 2019, Amazon SageMaker Autopilot automatically trains and tunes the best machine learning models for classification or regression based on your data while allowing you to maintain full control and visibility. Here's a quick overview of the agenda for today. Uh, for today's session, we'll be covering the following topics. A high-level overview of Autopilot, discussing the motivation and philosophy behind the product. Then we'll dive into the features of Autopilot. I will then show you a demo of Autopilot in action before ending with two customer success stories, highlighting how customers today are using Autopilot. So let's get started. The mission of Autopilot is to empower customers to use machine learning with minimal machine learning experience required. Autopilot makes it easy for data analysts and scientists to automatically create the best prediction models for their data using the power of machine learning. According to QuantHub, there are three times more job postings than job searches for data scientist positions. And data science is the second most in-demand tech role. The first is cybersecurity engineers, no surprise there. But this is why scaling data science expertise in a company often takes time. And finding and affording large data science teams can be a challenge, which is why we built Autopilot, so that all customers can easily create the best prediction models, even though they do not have deep machine learning expertise or access to a large amount of data scientists. At a high level, Autopilot works like this. With SageMaker Autopilot, you provide a tabular data set and we'll discuss more about tabular data on the next slide. Uh, but then you select this target attribute to predict. This attribute can be a number, such as a house price, which is an example of regression, uh, or it could be a category, such as spam, not spam, which is an example of classification. SageMaker Autopilot will automatically explore different solutions to find the best model. You can then directly deploy the model to production with just one click. Autopilot also makes it easy to get detailed insights about your data and model. For example, Autopilot can tell you what the accuracy of your model was on both validation and training data sets and help you understand the impact of features on the prediction of the model. Autopilot enables you to focus on getting insights from your data. By doing the machine learning development for you, you can spend your time on the most important part, which is understanding how to get the most business value and insights from the data that you already have. Now, what are some common use cases that we see with Autopilot? Well, as I mentioned, the first thing you need to use Autopilot is tabular data. And when I say tabular data, think CSVs, spreadsheets, relational databases. Tabular data is just structured data. And as you may have guessed, it's also one of the most common data formats used by businesses. Each column in this tabular data set here on the slide is referred to as a feature. And the target column or target attribute that I mentioned earlier is what we're trying to predict. So in the example here, if I train something with autopilot, I would then be able to input features such as var zero through var four and be able to predict a one or a zero from that target column. And as it turns out, tabular data is pretty common. I actually had a hard time narrowing down a few use cases to put into this slide. Um, you know, Therefore, these use cases listed on the right are, are really just here to give you an idea of ways our customers are leveraging Autopilot, and it's by no means a, a complete list. Uh, one of my data scientists that I work with, uh, he actually used Autopilot for anomaly detection use case on shipping patterns. And I do a lot of work with satellite data, and we're actually able to use Autopilot to predict soil types uh, coming off of sensors on board the satellites. So when it comes to actually using tabular data, there are actually quite a few ways that you can load your data sets into Autopilot. If you don't have a large spreadsheet, if you have a small CSV file, you can actually load your files directly into S3. Or if you have a bigger data set, you can connect directly to your Redshift cluster. You could use Amazon Athena or any other AWS database uh, directly from your SageMaker Studio notebook. Making it even easier for you to store data in a highly scalable way on AWS and still gain valuable business insights that can only come from machine learning models. Autopilot is supported by several of our partner platforms, such as Domo, and we'll be getting into more of that later. But suffice to say that the use cases for Autopilot are quite extensive for this pretty common data type. 
All right, so to fully understand how autopilot helps you by automating the creation of prediction models, we need to spend a quick moment to understand how resource intensive the process of developing an accurate machine learning model can be. Thus, we will briefly go through Kate's abridged version of the machine learning life cycle. And for those of you who are familiar with machine life cycle, you might have cringed, but I promise you, this will be worth your time because this is how we're gonna understand exactly what autopilot is doing for us when I talk about automating building models. Now, when we build the machine learning model, the very first step is to perform data preparation and feature engineering. And some of the best basic techniques for this stage might include something like imputation, where you fill in missing values, handling outliers through some kind of normalization method, the binning of categorical features, and more. And typically this process is done by a data scientist who's familiar with the data. Uh, and as such, it's usually a pretty manual process. You know, sure, there are some common techniques that will generally be applied, but at the end, whether you choose to group your data into five groups or 500 groups is a bit of a judgment call and it's typically very iterative. As we learn more about the data, we change the way we're doing the feature engineering and we can improve the overall model quality. After the data is prepared and ready to go, it's time for training the actual model. And there are lots of different model training algorithms out there that we can choose from. And again, this process is often very iterative. We take a best guess, we see what the results are, we make changes based on that information. In addition to actually training the model with different algorithms, there's this model tuning step that comes after that. During model tuning, we are turning different knobs specific to the training algorithm, which can help improve the model's performance. Again, this is done typically very manually. We plot some charts, the data scientist looks at those and goes, you know, hmm, I think the learning rate's too high, makes some adjustments. And even the automated tools for hyperparameter tuning, um, you know, it's still typically very iterative. We do different search methods to, to narrow down, you know, what makes sense for the actual hyperparameters that we change. And so we usually will start with a large range of parameters and then narrow them down through subsequent tuning jobs. And finally, once our model is tuned and performing like a well-oiled mathematical machine, we can deploy it into production. And at this point, we are starting to send new data to the model, we're getting results back, we're dominating our industry with all of our machine learning driven awesomeness and knowledge and insights from our data. But this picture here is a very simplified version, right? Wouldn't it be nice if it was just steps one, two, three, and four? But the reality is, it's not so nice and simple. Um, in fact, uh, the model training and tuning all throughout here is super iterative, and it can actually take a really long time. It also involves your precious data science resources throughout. So this isn't a one and done linear path to completion. I like to think of it more as like the scientific process where a data scientist has a hypothesis of what the best approach will be. They experiment, they learn, they adjust their hypothesis, and this process will repeat until the model is performing at the levels you need for it to be useful to your business. And here's where autopilot really makes a difference. Because Autopilot automates its entire process. Autopilot does all the heavy lifting to find the model that best fits your data. Using a single API call or a few clicks in the Amazon SageMaker Studio, SageMaker Autopilot first inspects your data set, and it runs a number of candidates to go figure out the optimal combination of data preprocessing steps, aka it automates step one. I will show you what this looks like during the demo, but at a high level, it tries lots of different feature combinations. And again, a data scientist on my team, um, he actually said that he spent weeks trying to manually do feature engineering. And uh, he gave Autopilot a try because he wasn't getting very strong results. As it turns out, because Autopilot is running through a script in the background and it spun up 100 different combinations of features, the, end, the features that ended up working the best on his data set were not what he thought they would be. And he was able to get about a 30% increase in accuracy coming out of Autopilot. And again, the feature combination that ended up being the most performant was something that he had truthfully not thought of. And this is really the power of Autopilot is that because it's automated, right, we can spin up a large amount of these different feature engineering jobs and scale out more than any one person could do through a manual process on their own. In fact, Autopilot trains hundreds of machine learning algorithms and tests different hyperparameters for us. And as usual, because this all takes place on Amazon SageMaker, we get that nice fully managed infrastructure that's highly scalable that allows us to do this in a very big way. 
And then last but not least, um, Amazon Station Bear Autopilot also transparently generates all the artifacts to show you exactly how the data was pre-processed, what algorithms it selected, what hyperparameter combinations it tried and tuned. So this isn't just a black box. In fact, whenever you go into the console, and I'll show you this during the demo, you can actually see everything the autopilot's done and trained and tested and tuned and access those artifacts. Now getting a little bit deeper into the autopilot core features, just want to call it that again, autopilot supports input data that's going to be in a tabular format. And it does automatic data cleaning and pre-processing. So again, that's step one. It does automatic algorithm selection for linear regression, binary classification, and multi-class classification. It does automatic hyperparameter optimization. That's that nice step three. It also does distributed training. So when I talk about scaling out in a big way, we can do distributed training built into autopilot. And it also does automatic instance and cluster size selection. So you don't actually have to worry about scaling. It's taking care of it on your behalf, right? It's going to go through and look at the data set size, latencies, algorithms, and select optimal combinations of compute instance types for you. Autopilot is really easy to start. With just a few clicks in the console or an API call, or a couple lines of Python code, you can be off and building and tuning machine learning models in no time. And this is truly meant to be a set and forget type of experience. You input your data, you set your target column, you click go. When you come back in a few hours, your model is there and ready. And then you can either select to deploy that model or go back and do analysis to understand how that model was generated. And this is what really sets Autopilot apart, is that it's really as much of a black box as you want it to be. If you do not have very much machine learning experience, then you can use Autopilot to quickly get started on building those ML models. And for those of you who might be more experienced experts, you can always go back and go through and analyze how Autopilot selected the feature combinations, how it selected the hyperparameters, and then use it to inform feature development that you might do with that particular data set. And because Autopilot is built on top of Amazon SageMaker, you have the ability to manage and control access permissions for models and other resources. Autopilot saves model artifacts to a user-provided S3 bucket. And this allows for easy configuration of authentication and authorization for all the artifacts produced by an Autopilot job. In addition, administrators can easily and comprehensively control access and permissions to all the resources inside of SageMaker, including the saved models, inference endpoints, or batch transform jobs through IAM users, roles and policies, and more. And Autopilot, along with the rest of SageMaker, enables compliance with multiple standards, including SOC, PCI, FedRAMP, HIPAA, and more. And for those of you who might be interested in learning more, there are definitely some great sessions and YouTube videos out there that go very deep into SageMaker security, for all those cybersecurity engineers out there, the rare breed. Um, and that'll actually teach you how you can configure SageMaker to be you know, as secure as you need it to be to really meet your requirements for your industry. For your business. So, you know, I keep talking about how Autopilot is very transparent. This is not a black box. And I want to highlight just how transparent it really is. Um, so, you know, check this out here, right? So at the end of your Autopilot training job, you actually get this notebook that shows you the insights Autopilot discovered during the data preparation and future engineering phase. And you can edit this code, right? This is actual Python code that you can access and edit and change. And it gives you core recommendations like, hey, you know, there's some missing values here that's probably messing up the results of your model. Hey, there's some, you know, features here that probably need to be looked at. They're way outside the big outliers, you know, and things like that. So you can go back and then look at your data set and then make some adjustments if they are, you know, some bad data points and then retrain due to their autopilot job. And that also will impact your model's performance. Similarly, Autopilot also generates this model candidate notebook. And this is a fully runnable notebook as well. That represents a kind of blueprint that shows how Autopilot actually built your model. So this notebook lists the data transformations that were used. It lets you know um, what estimators, so what algorithms it selected. So did it use XGBoost or Linear Learner or a feed-forward neural network algorithm called Multilayer Perceptron? And if you have no idea what I just said, don't worry. It just tells you, and you can go Google it, and you can figure out exactly what it, uh, what it did. And our documentation also gives you some nice um, explanations on what these algorithms are and what they're doing with your data. 
And you can also use this notebook for things like compliance. Um, so for example, if you need to explain to other data scientists in your organization how this model was created, you could provide them with this notebook that gives them detailed information on what model you're using, how it was derived, what algorithm was selected. And then you can also go into our documentation so they can then understand AWS's implementation of XGBoost, Linear Learner, et cetera, on our platform. So with that, I'd like to show you a demo that illustrates uh, a lot of what I've just gone through. All right, so let's get to the demo. So here we have the Amazon SageMaker uh, landing page in the AWS console. And you can get to this by just going to services and then Amazon SageMaker. And what we're gonna do for this demo is we're first gonna go into Amazon SageMaker Studio. And we're gonna open up our Amazon SageMaker Studio notebook. So let's give this a quick second here. Cool Jupyter Lab logo. All right. Now, what I'm going to show is two different ways uh, that we can create an, an autopilot experiment. The first would be to come over here onto the left side of your studio notebook and click on the little beaker. And then from here, we can click create experiment. We'll give our experiment our name, so autopilot demo. And then we specify our training data location. So for me, this is living in a bucket that I created for this demo. So that would be reinvent autopilot demo train underscore data dot CSV. Next we need to specify is a target attribute name. So this is the column that has our truth data in it. And I'll show you this data set in just a moment here so you can see what I mean. But for us, it's called churn question marks. That is the column name. And what this column contains is true or false values. So true value means the customer churned and left to a different company, and false means they stayed with our company. And then finally, we need to tell Autopilot where our test data lives. So this is in the exact same bucket, reinvent Autopilot demo under test data.data.csv. All right. Now I mentioned earlier that there's support for binary classification, regression, and multi-class classification within Autopilot. If you know what problem type you have, you're welcome to select the specific class of algorithms you'd like to try, but otherwise you can always leave this as auto, and Autopilot will figure out which class fits your data. Similarly, um, we're gonna run a complete experiment today, but if you just wanted to generate those candidate notebooks, you have the option of doing that as well. Um, but again, for this demo, we're gonna run the experiment to completion. So what I'm going to do now is click, click Create Experiment. And ta-da! So here we are. Uh, our autopilot job is now running. So um, it takes a little bit of time to get started. So what I'm going to do now is actually dive into some alternative ways um, to use autopilot. And I have a completed job that I'll show you guys to show you the results. Um, and so to dive into the actual data set itself, um, now what we just did was create an autopilot job through the UI. And for those of you who are more comfortable with Python, you can create autopilot jobs within the Python SDK. And that's exactly what this notebook is doing. So here we're using Python code to do exactly what we just did on that previous screen. So what we have is our same data set. So this is that customer churn data set. But here we can actually see it in a little more depth. So let me move this over so we can see it a little better. So we have 21 columns in our data set. So we have um, the actual you know, information about each customer and their utilization in their accounts. So we can see like what state they're from, we can see that they have voicemail plans, uh, what time of day and for how long do they make calls, have they had uh, interactions with their customer service, how frequently. And then we have our final column, this is that churn question mark, this is our target attribute, which is gonna be true or false, where true indicates that the customer has churned, so they are no longer with our company, and false means that customer has stayed with our company. So this is the value we're trying to predict. So our goal of our algorithm is to say, given all these attributes about a customer account, do we think this customer has a high probability of churning and moving on to a different company? And if so, perhaps we can then go take some actions to target them, maybe some, give them some coupons or um, follow up with them via email and just kind of you know, hopefully prevent that from happening. 
but that's what our model is going to try to predict. That's what that target attribute column is, is this churn column here. And as I had said, that this notebook is doing the exact same thing that I did in the console, just using Python code instead. Um, so here we have our input data config. So our data source, our training data, is going to be that uh, train underscore data dot CSV. Our target attribute name is churn. And then uh, we also have our output data path. So um, this is, again, very much the same configuration of what I did in the UI. We're just using Python. And then we can create an autopilot job using the SageMaker SDK. And in the notebook, we can see what's happening as well. So here we have analyzing data, feature engineering. Um, so this is the same output that we see in this much slicker looking UI, um, but it is the same information being displayed back. So it does do the same thing. You can do it in Python or through the UI. Now, as I mentioned earlier, before we start into this demo, um, you get two notebooks that come out of an autopilot experiment. The first is this data exploration notebook. And I totally cheated, and <laughs> I pre-ran this experiment for you guys so that we could see the results immediately. And so this is actually the data exploration notebook for that customer churn data set. And what's cool about this is that it has these suggested action items. So it recommends things that you can do throughout your um, data set to help prepare it and, and better improve your model performance. Um, so first, it shows us that our data has loaded in correctly. As you see, this table looks very similar to one I showed you before. That's a good thing. Um, that means that we properly pass our data to our training algorithms. And then we can see some other things it does. So here it says we found zero out of the 21 columns that contain missing values. If there were a lot of missing values, that could skew our model performance. And if there were, it gives you some recommendations of ways that you can improve that. Similarly, it has counts as for categorical features. Um, so we can see, for example, churn. There are two unique entries that make sense. We have true and false. Um, so we can make that a binary. Zero could be false and one could be true. And so this is the kind of things that we get captured in that data exploration notebook. So if you're new to machine learning, as you could imagine, this would be very useful to have. If you're not so sure about what types of feature engineering techniques you need to be applying to your model, you could run an autopilot job and then go through this notebook and understand what changes you might be able to make that could improve the model performance. And so it gives you some nice recommendations to, to get started from. Similarly, we have the autopilot candidate notebook. So this is gonna give us some more detailed information on the models that were actually built. So there's that feature engineering piece and then there's actual model training that happens within autopilot. So here we can see that the data set has two classes. So autopilot automatically determined that this is gonna be a binary classification problem, right? Binary, zero or one. And then it gives you an idea of, it tells you exactly what to try to maximize. So it maximizes the F1 quality metric. So again, this text is telling you the strategy that autopilot used to train your models. And as you go through it, then walks you down through each approach that it used to include the feature engineering techniques, the types of algorithms that it applied. And it's actually executable code, which is really nice. You can reuse some of this code. And so here we can see um, we used it use a DPP zero XGBoost. That was the first experiment that it ran. And it tells you that it used the data transformation strategy first transforms numeric features using the robust imputer. And then categorical features were encoded using the threshold one hot encoder text features using the multi-column TF-IDF vectorizer. And if those are just big words and you don't know what I said, don't sweat it. That's the whole point, right? Is that um, it did these different pre-processing techniques to improve model performance. And if we go and click on any one of these, so if we look on the robust computer, we can actually see the source code that it used to do that. So when we talk about full transparency, this is exactly what I'm referring to, is that we understand not only the models that were selected, but also techniques that were applied to do feature engineering to those models. And it also flags potential areas in the model where um, performance might be getting impact due to the data not being perfectly cleansed or having some kind of errors within it. And so this is great, again, for understanding how the model is making its selections and performing. Um, if you needed to do additional work beyond the models that Autopilot generates, this gives you a really good understanding of what feature engineering techniques perform better than others. 
Um, and also, you know, if you get the model coming out and it's looking great, um, you have confidence that, you know, if you ever needed to go back and understand why the model did perform a certain way, that data is there. But if you don't need it, then you don't need it, right? So it's good to have um, and not need versus the other way around. And so this is how autopilot works. This gives you an idea of the outputs of autopilot. And I just want to quickly call out, and I'll show you guys, sorry. <laughs> I think I got ahead of myself there. I want to show you guys real quick here um, what this would be like without autopilot. So this is that exact same data set. And instead of just running, you know, couple, you know, putting a couple of lines in the UI or executing a couple cells in a notebook, um, doing this by hand requires a lot more work, a lot more knowledge about statistics, machine learning, to be able to yield very similar results. So as I'm scrolling through here, and I know I'm scrolling fast, but you can see this is just general statistics in the data set. We have to do all this work to figure out how we want to do the feature engineering to pare down our models and pare down our features. So the same techniques that were applied here, again, my, my fancy words like the imputer, where did that go? So figuring out that we need to use the robust imputer and one hot encoding and this TFIDF vectorizer. Um, to know that we need to do those things, we have to do a lot of analysis up front. And this, as I'm still scrolling guys, this is a lot of scrolling, this takes a long time. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of know-how and understanding of statistics, data sets, how machine learning algorithms work. And so autopilot saves a lot of time by just allowing you to just click a couple of buttons and then it's off doing its training. And so you come back here in a couple hours and magically you have these notebooks that tell you how your data set performed, potential flaws in your data set, as well as a list of candidates uh, for a quality model. So as you can imagine, this is a significant time saver, a huge advantage for those of you who may be newer to machine learning or not have a lot of machine learning experience. Um, in fact, Truly, you don't need any machine learning experience to be able to use autopilot. As you saw, it really was just a couple of clicks in the console. All right, and we can see this demo. I'm running it live, guys. <laughs> Is that our analyzing of data has been done. So we can actually now start seeing our, our notebooks. Now, these are going to look very similar, of course, to the ones that I just showed you because it's the same data set. But these are the outputs that you'll be getting from your autopilot job as well. And so um, that concludes this demo. And all of this material that I have from today's demo is available in the Amazon SageMaker examples GitHub repository. So feel free to execute these notebooks yourself. Uh, get hands-on, experiment. I always feel like that is the best way to learn. We also have some very helpful blog posts and tutorials published on Autopilot that are great resources for getting started and experimenting um, so that you can understand how Autopilot might fit into your workflow, your business use case, your mission use case whatever it may be. Now, in addition to using Amazon SageMaker within the AWS console, there are also quite a few Amazon SageMaker Autopilot partnerships out there that I'd like to call out. Um, so for example, you can actually analyze your data in Domo, and whenever you use the AutoML model creation feature within Domo, under the hood, it's using Autopilot to create a prediction model for you. So this slide is listing some of those partners who have autopilot integration into their, uh, their actual platforms. And now I'm gonna share with you two examples of customers that have used autopilot with these partners. All right, so the first one is gonna be Freddy's, purveyor of delicious steak burgers and custard. Um, and Freddy's wanted to use machine learning to optimize their menus and better incentivize guests at each location. Using the Domo data science suite powered by SageMaker Autopilot, they were able to build machine learning models that can make predictions based on menus and price changes. This resulted in an increase in foot traffic at the restaurants. And thanks to the ease of Autopilot, they were able to use a five times larger data set, which helped yield more accurate predictions and were able to accelerate their time to market by 2x. And another customer leveraging Autopilot uh, for a really great use case is Skull Candy, who has awesome headphones. And when COVID hit uh, and many people transitioned to working from home, Skull Candy experienced a large surge in order volume, 
which started to overload their system and led to a spike in customer service interactions. By leveraging the SciSense platform with Autopilot running underneath, they were able to quickly build machine learning models that help them better understand the relationships between customer satisfaction, contact channel, product, and contact reasons. This helped them more easily identify key topics or products uh, that improved their overall customer satisfaction. So again, these are just two examples of how customers are able to quickly deploy machine learning models using Autopilot. Even if they don't have you know, massive data science teams at their disposal, Autopilot makes it very easy to apply machine learning to your tabular data sets and be able to scale that machine learning lifecycle, that machine learning process, those steps one through four, in a very big way. So, you know, during today's session of Autopilot, I hope you learned something uh, interesting and relevant to your use case that you may be working on. And if you're brand new to machine learning, Autopilot is a great way to get started building models, even if you don't have a ton of deep learning experience. But if you're an experienced data scientist, also, Autopilot is also a great time saver. Its ability to try multiple feature combinations and algorithms uh, with just a click of a button gives you deeper insights into your problem and may jump start jumpstart the tuning of your final model. This is a very powerful and versatile feature. All you need is tabular data and you can have detailed notebooks automatically generated for your exploratory data analysis and your model candidates, which is pretty darn cool. Thank you for attending.